Have you ever thought about how Facebook makes revenue? Who's paying for Facebook? The company makes you believe the platform is free and as they used to say, it will always be. In this video, you'll learn why this is false. You'll also learn about the manipulation strategies Facebook uses to extract money from you without you even realizing it. Social networks are pervasive in our lives. They've become an ever-evolving repository of our daily activities. If you want to know more about your cousin's graduation party you couldn't attend last week, check her Facebook profile. Take a look at your friend's Instagram account to know what cocktails she drank during her holidays in Spain. But you can also visit your Facebook feed to consume the latest news. This is something common, especially among young people. In a survey conducted in the US in 2021, 43% of millennials reported they consumed news on social networks daily. In another study, it emerged that 52% of US adults get news on Facebook. Social networks have become information dispatchers. They are gateways between you and the external world. This isn't harmful per se. After all, social networks have facilitated access to information and decentralized its production by providing a platform to actors who otherwise wouldn't have a voice in traditional media. These are remarkable accomplishments, but some problems do persist. The amount of information floating on social networks is enormous, measured in hundreds of petabytes. You can't pass all of that information at once, nor would you in a lifetime. This data needs to be filtered before being presented in your account. The filtering is usually done with artificial intelligence. The AI works like a miner frantically searching gold nuggets in a giant gold mine. In this analogy, nuggets are the posts, pictures and videos relevant to you. For me, Filtering is the most controversial element of social networks. I identified different types of problems tied to filtering, which I tackle in separate parts of this video. One, the user data social networks need to fuel their filtering algorithms and the deceiving strategies they use to acquire this data. Two, the misalignment between your and the social network's goals. Three, the actors involved in filtering and how they can leverage your personal data to manipulate you. I only focus on Facebook as a case study to keep the video somewhat short. However, many of the points I raise about Facebook can be transferred to other platforms like Instagram or TikTok. In the video, I provide a brief explanation of how filtering algorithms work. Don't worry, it won't be a lecture on AI and recommendation systems, but this knowledge will help you understand the threats of manipulation posed by social networks. To work their magic, Facebook filtering algorithms need gargantuan amounts of data. As a first step, let's investigate what type of data Facebook acquires from you and how. You're on the street having fun with your friends, somebody you've never seen before approaches your group and asks you to share with them sensitive information like the food you like, your partner name, your health state, your products that you usually buy online, the politicians you voted for in the last election, your phone number, the name of all of your friends, all cafes you've been the last year. How would you react to such a bizarre request? If you were like me, you would laugh at it and go back having fun with your friends, and rightly so. This is only a subset of the data that Facebook tracks from you. When you sign up to Facebook, you give the company disproportionate means to extract data from you. The platform becomes a silent observer that tracks all of your behaviors and decrypts your secret desires. Facebook knows your food, 
political musical preferences by the lives you live. It quantifies your interests in topics by how you engage with posts and pages. It deducts the people you trust by measuring how much you share their content. It infers your location by getting GPS data from your phone at every moment. Say you go out to a restaurant with your colleagues for dinner. Facebook will know which restaurant you've been to with whom by crossing your and your colleagues' location data. It will track how long you've been at the restaurant and what time you've come home. If you publish pictures of the dishes you got, it may also infer the type of food you ate. How can it do that? By reading hashtags you left on your posts like I love pasta or analyzing your photographs with image processing algorithms. In a few months, you'll likely forget the dinner you had. By contrast, Facebook will remember the event forever. While carrying out research for this video, I was shocked to learn that Facebook not only extracts personal data from its platform, but also from third parties. The social network defines such data as off-Facebook activities. This consists of information other businesses share with Facebook, like interactions on their website or products bought on their marketplace. In other words, Facebook can read your browser history. Whilst investigating off Facebook activities in my personal account, I saw that reputable businesses like Adobe, Netflix, Spotify all shared my interactions on their platform with Facebook. Even my bank sent Facebook information. I assume that Facebook knows at least when and from which devices I log into my bank account. Facebook implements a subtle form of manipulation to acquire our data. There's no technological trick at this point. Even though this manipulation happens in plain sight, it goes undetected by most Facebook users. The manipulation occurs at sign up when a wannabe Facebook user is asked to accept the platform terms of service. Buried in a wall of text are the magic spells drafted in legalese which bestow upon the social network superpowers necessary to acquire personal data employing invasive tracking strategies. Facebook lures you into its platform making you believe it's free while carefully hiding the massive cost you pay for using it. Your privacy. The tactic of disguising invasive data extraction techniques in long terms of service documents that nobody reads is commonly adopted by tech companies. A study from 2008 estimated that users should spend on average 76 work days to comprehend the terms of service they accept in a year. This is just impossible. The figure speaks volumes about the power asymmetry between tech companies and consumers. Companies force upon users predatory conditions. Users don't have the time to understand what they sign. I guess if people were aware of the quantity and quality of data Facebook extracts from them, they would spend at least a couple of seconds more before registering. After all, you wouldn't give a stranger in the street information about when you use your bank account, would you? But why is Facebook so interested in our data? The obsession with collecting personal data is central to all social networks. For Harvard social psychologist Shazana Zuboff, social networks have contributed to build a new type of economic system she calls surveillance capitalism. In surveillance capitalism, behavioral data is the new oil. Personal data is fed to sophisticated machine learning algorithms that predict how users will react to certain stimuli. That's the case with Facebook filtering algorithms. These programs need to know you to show the most relevant content. The company achieves this by processing the data footprint you leave on and off its platform. Facebook gathers likes you leave on pages, engagement with posts and your habits. By crunching this data, the platform extrapolates behavioral and psychological models of you. These models are leveraged to feed you more of what you like. By doing so, Facebook covertly influences your choices. 
You may think that these tactics don't affect you, but research which prove you wrong. These algorithms are quite effective at persuading people. In a study from 2017, a group of researchers engineered Facebook ad campaigns targeting users with different psychological profiles. Some subjects had introverted personalities, others were extroverted. Researchers could approximate psychological profiles by considering a single like left by users on Facebook. For example, they deduced that people who like socializing are probably extroverted. Once they inferred users' personalities, a researchers presented subjects with ads. Some advertised products for extroverted people with an extroverted turn. Other ads were devised with a, an introverted audience in mind. Researchers found that users who saw ads with content aligned with their personality were 54% more likely to purchase the products promoted. This result is remarkable, considering that the strategy employed for determining psychological traits was unsophisticated. In another study, researchers compared the accuracy of algorithms and humans judging personality traits. Scholars trained machine learning model with a variable number of Facebook likes per user to make personality judgments. The results were astounding. The algorithm needed just 10 likes to be more accurate than a colleague, 70 to surpass a friend, 150 to be the parent, and 300 to be more accurate than a spouse. Computer models were also more successful than human judges in predicting 12 out of 13 life outcomes and real life behaviors, such as drug abuse, political orientation, and health. For four of these traits, algorithms were better predictors than self-rated judgments. In other words, a machine learning model in certain instances, when trained on a sufficient number of Facebook likes, knows you better than you know yourself. The algorithms used in these studies are way less sophisticated than those utilized by Facebook to filter content. Also, they are trained on a fraction of the behavioral data Facebook has access to. Consequently, Facebook's ability to read your mind is significantly more advanced. In surveillance capitalism, behavioral data is indeed the new oil. Facebook doesn't need any money from you, it just needs you. There is a contraposition between how users see Facebook and how Facebook sees itself. Users utilize the platform for different reasons. Some want to broadcast their thoughts on various topics. Others want to share important moments of their life with their circle of friends. Others use it to stay up to date about what's going on in the world. The common thread of these use cases is that Facebook connects users and facilitates communication. In the end, we can say connecting people is the ultimate end of the platform from a user's perspective. In its PR campaigns, Facebook constantly repeats that its goal is to connect people. It seems that Facebook's and its users' goals are aligned. This is true only on a surface level. Providing a platform to connect people isn't Facebook end. It's a means to reach its ultimate goal. So what's Facebook's end game? The company business model is advertising. Advertisers pay Facebook to place targeted ads that reach a relevant audience. Facebook is also a collector of behavioral data. The platform extracts personal data to train sophisticated filtering algorithms which enable advertisers to optimize their ad campaigns on the social network. Facebook's ultimate goal is to increase the return on investment of its advertisers. The better psychological models Facebook can generate of its users, the more it can target them with ads that will convert. Higher conversion rates translate to higher gains for advertisers and ultimately for Facebook. The company sacrifices users' privacy for its profit. 
Facebook manipulates its users to achieve its business goal. The company reiterates that it's on a mission to connect the world in its marketing spiel. However, it conveniently conceals that it shows people ads engineered to trigger their response. More importantly, Facebook hides that the intelligent targeting of the ads is obtained through the consumer data the platform collects. The omission was so apparent that the European Commission forced Facebook to modify its terms of service in 2019 to respect EU consumer law. In particular, the Commission asked the company to clarify how the social network profits from consumer data it extracts from its users. To get a better picture of how Facebook takes advantage of our data, we need to take a look at how they use machine learning to produce personalized ads. We don't have the nitty-gritty technical details about how Facebook uses machine learning to deliver ads. These are proprietary algorithms, arguably the most valuable business IP. However, in 2020, the social network published a blog post for its business customers that provides an overview of how personalized ads work. Facebook selects what ads to show user based on a mixture of human decisions and automation. Humans initiate the filtering process. Advertisers decide the target audience they want to show their ads. Facebook provides them with a handy tool to segment people based on their gender, interest, job, and any other attribute Facebook can extract. For example, let's take the case of a game development company that wants to sell a new fantasy video game in Germany. The advertiser can target young males living in Germany who play video games and have liked the Final Fantasy and Zelda Facebook pages. Audience segmentation is only possible because of the aggressive techniques employed by Facebook to extract data from its users on and off the platform. After advertisers have selected their target, algorithms take over the decision process. First, all the relevant ads for a third person are gathered. These are all the ads for which a user is part of the target audience decided by advertisers. Then, an auction starts with relevant ads. The goal is to select the top ads to show a person. Each ad in the auction gets a total value score. Facebook presents to a user the ads with the higher total value scores. The total value score combines two factors, advertiser value and ad quality. Facebook calculates advertiser value by multiplying two numbers, the advertiser's beat and the action rate. The action rate measures the likelihood that a person will take action when seeing an ad. In marketing lingo, this is the conversion rate. The advertiser decides the action for an ad that is the business objective. Buying a product or visiting a web page are examples of actions. The advertiser's bid is obviously decided by the advertiser. The action rate is estimated with algorithms. Facebook sums the ad quality score to the advertiser value. This operation finalizes the calculation of the total value score. An algorithm predicts the ad quality score. It makes a judgment by looking at low quality markers like too much text in the ad or the use of clickbaity techniques. Facebook uses AI specifically machine learning to estimate the action rate and the ad quality score. Machine learning models learn through data. They don't require specific instructions as they learn autonomously. These algorithms can learn to perform tasks by being exposed to many samples of that task. For example, we can train a machine learning model to recognize whether a picture features a dog or a cat. To train such a classifier, we feed the algorithm some images with cats and some with dogs. The model will autonomously figure out how to distinguish cats from dogs once it sees enough images. 
In the case of action rate estimation, Facebook's machine learning models can predict the likelihood a user will perform an action set as a business goal by an advertiser. The models are trained on the behavioral data Facebook extracts from users. As for a general machine learning heuristic, the more data available, the more precise the estimate. This is why Facebook is so keen on getting as much data as possible from you. Once again, better estimates lead to improved return on investment for advertisers, which lead to higher profits for Facebook. Another service that Facebook offers to advertisers is Dynamic Ads for Broad Audiences, or DABA. This method brings automation to the next level. Advertisers using DABA don't need to specify a target audience for their ads. As long as they share with Facebook their users' activity on their websites, Facebook can automatically find the user segments which might like their products. Facebook achieves this by crunching all the data it receives from third-party applications. In other words, if an advertiser serves its users' data to Facebook, the social network will reward it by finding the optimal target market for its ads. In doing so, Facebook saves advertisers the resources they would spend for market segmentation. This is a win-win scenario. In its blog, Facebook declares that its ultimate goal is to maximize value for both people and businesses. While I agree that Facebook attempts to maximize advertisers' value, I don't think it maximizes people's value. If anything, Facebook uses manipulative algorithmic techniques to heavily influence people's behaviors. In the process, it diminishes their freedom of choice. All of this is accomplished by taking advantage of sensitive data extracted with shady strategies. This isn't done in people's interests and it certainly doesn't maximize their value. Users are being manipulated every time they scroll their newsfeed. They ignore how manipulation happens. What's worse, the majority doesn't even suspect they are being manipulated. Facebook personalized ads are a worrying form of algorithmic manipulation, but they aren't the most dangerous. A more dangerous threat is posed by bad actors who can exploit Facebook's powerful filtering algorithms and behavioral data. The social network maximizes advertisers' value no matter the scope of a campaign. As long as somebody pays Facebook to promote its product, the platform will use its resources at its best to optimize the message reach. If the advertiser is a local restaurant, the manipulation threat for users is practically non-existent. Worst case scenario, you lose the opportunity to try a great pizza at a restaurant that didn't use Facebook to promote its cuisine. However, if a malicious advertiser appears who wants to influence citizens to swing an election, or to spread fake news, we have a significant issue. Both the good and bad actors will have access to the powerful filtering tools offered by Facebook. The malicious actor can exploit Facebook behavioral data to segment the audience he thinks may be most responsive to its message, or he can let Facebook find the best segment. Then he can run ad campaigns and leave Facebook's machine learning models the task of spreading his message optimally. A bad actor will have an easy time spreading his content because of Facebook's business model. The social network optimizes advertisers' value regardless of whether they are good or bad actors. Of course, Facebook declares it seeks to stop bad actors from exploiting its personalized ads. However, the definition of a bad actor is slippery. What's a good faith advertiser for Facebook could be a bad one for somebody else and vice versa. Also, the amount of advertisers using Facebook is so large that it's challenging for the platform to properly review each one of them. Unfortunately, this isn't just some theoretical threat. These exploits have happened already. The Facebook 
Cambridge Analytical scandal in 2018 is a testament to the danger of manipulation posed by the unscrupulous treatment of users' data championed by the social network. Cambridge Analytica was a political consulting company. While working on a project for politicians, it extracted the data of 87 million Facebook users without their consent. The company developed a Facebook app that proposed a personality quiz. More than 250,000 Facebook users took the survey. Cambridge Analytica went on to exploit a loophole in the Facebook API and extracted data about the friends of the people who responded to their quiz. The consulting firm used the data gathered from Facebook to organize targeted campaigns to support Donald Trump in 2016. The impact of Cambridge Analytica on Trump's election was arguably minimal. However, the affair shows how little effort Facebook put in controlling bad access from taking advantage of its valuable data. The problem is summarized by Sandy Parakilis, a former Facebook employee who was in charge of protecting users' data until 2012. In an interview he released to the New York Times, Sandy claimed that at Facebook, the people whose job is to protect the user always are fighting an appeal battle against the people whose job is to make money for the company. Facebook manipulates you in different manners. It lures you into believing you can use its platform for free while you're paying a high price, giving up your privacy. It induces you the need to buy new products by showing you targeted ads that you're likely to fall for. It opens up opportunities to bad actors to influence your political views and, sometimes, gives them access to your most sensitive data. These threats aren't unique to Facebook. In the era of surveillance capitalism, most social networks like Instagram, TikTok, pose a similar menace. Are there strategies we can put in place to defend ourselves from this manipulation attempts. There isn't a bulletproof strategy to fight back social network manipulation. The phenomenon is still new and evolving. As individuals and society, we haven't built up adequate defenses yet. However, I'd like to share a few tentative hygiene measures that can help address the problem. These strategies can be grouped into two levels, the individual and the society enshrined by regulatory bodies. As users, we should educate ourselves about the content of the terms of services we accept when signing up to social networks. The majority of users give up sensitive information without knowing it, nor are they aware of how social networks exploit their personal data to influence their actions. These blank spots can only be addressed through education. For example, users can check out crowdsourced websites like Terms of Service Didn't Read. In this website, volunteers dissect social networks' terms of services and bring up problematic clauses. Users should also learn that free digital products are an exception. Only non-profit organizations working on open source projects with transparent licenses release really free products. When using a service developed by a company without directly paying for it, chances are you're paying through your data. Users should grow a healthy skepticism against companies and not take at face value the marketing spiel coming from tech giants like Facebook, Google, and TikTok. Do you remember the old Facebook tagline? Facebook is free and it will always be. That was a marketing lie. Users should coalesce to push social networks to implement a subscription fee in exchange for minimal tracking and usage of their data. Your privacy and data are worth way more than the five euros a month you may pay for valuable social network service. This is true both for you and for Facebook. Another option people have is to use only services that respect their privacy. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of such services in the social network landscape. If you know any, uh, please share them in the comment section below. 
But in the case of uh, search engines, an example is DuckDuckGo. This is a valid alternative to Google that shows that it's possible to be in business and avoid pillaging users' data. DuckDuckGo has a zero user tracking policy that fully respects your privacy. While the strategies listed so far can be somewhat effective for individuals, the bigger picture will improve only through top-down societal intervention. For this to happen, regulatory bodies have to step up and force social networks to respect privacy. First, regulatory bodies must force social networks to be transparent regarding personal data usage. It could be argued that the change of the terms of service Facebook implemented in 2019 under the pressure of the European Commission goes in this direction. Facebook was pushed to clarify how it exploits users' data and how it makes its revenue in the terms of service. However, this is a minimal improvement. Almost nobody reads the terms of service when signing up. A more effective strategy would be to ask Facebook to provide a shorter reminder of how they utilize personal data in the ads they show in the newsfeed. Another important measure would be to limit what data social networks can track and how they can use it. In 2016, the EU implemented a legal framework called GDPR that addresses some of these issues. However, this legislation hasn't been capable of tackling many of the predatory data acquisition strategies used by social networks. As we saw, Facebook can still get pretty much any information it wants from you and use it to optimize its machine learning models freely. GDPR is a significant hassle for small companies. However, it's systematically bypassed by tech giants that can afford legal teams to find loopholes to justify their privacy infringing tactics. This is a vast topic that deserves another video. Let me know if you'd like to know more about it by leaving a comment below and I'll make another video on the subject. Social networks count on the ignorance of their users to foster their ad-driven business models. The more oblivious you are about how Facebook exploits your data, the more wiggle room you leave the platform to devise algorithms that influence your actions. Predicting users' behaviors and needs is the engine of surveillance capitalism. An accurate prediction algorithm ensures a good return on investment for advertisers, which in turn increases social networks' profits. This mechanism can be perpetrated only through manipulation. Social networks manipulate you when you sign up, when they track your data, and when they show you ads engineered to induce you to purchase. We should educate ourselves about how Facebook makes money with our data. Awareness is arguably the best strategy we have to push back against surveillance capitalism. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could like it and share it with your friends and family. I feel there's little awareness of this topic and hopefully this video can help shed some light on it. Wants to learn more about the impact of AI and tech on society? Then consider subscribing to the channel and activate the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Take care for now.